Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about maps and how you can make them more interesting to your user. Maps are a great way to add some experience to your app without doing too much coding. However, they're only interesting to give context to information that you already have. So for example, showing where a certain location is on a map. So the map itself is a bit boring, but you need to get something on it. Let's look at Google Maps, how you can use it. Here in my app, I have a couple of locations in a database and I want to show where they are on the map. So for example, Marriott Hotel, I can show the location on a map by clicking on an icon and I navigate to a different screen that shows a Google map and has a marker and a set position. Now this is just read only. I cannot move the marker or anything like that. Another use case is I want to make adjustments to the location on a map. So I don't have to guess or look up the coordinates somewhere else. I can make it right on the map. So for this, I have a different screen where I can edit the location on a map. So for that, I can click somewhere on the map and the location is updated. The icon is, the marker is changed to that location and I can set and leave the screen and save that location to the database. Let's look at the code, how to do that. I have created two different screens. They're very similar, but still two different ones. One to just view a position on a map and one to edit the position on a map. Let's start with a more simple one, just viewing a position. Within a scaffold, I create my Google map and under the markers attribute, I add the list of markers. Let's have a quick look at Google map in general. Mandatory is a camera position, the starting center point when I open up the map. So I use that the same location of the object I want to show and place it in the center of the map. So I use it to create the initial camera position as well as one single marker at that position. Now we see a lot of attributes we probably don't need, but towards the bottom we see markers, polygons, polylines, and circles. I'd say the most useful of these is markers and that you can use to place markers on top of your map. Also important are the functions on tab. That is a function triggered when you click somewhere on the map. So for example, if you want to highlight a location, store that, or in my scenario, I want to use that one as a new location of that object. I create that map of markers before I create the map and I keep it and leave it outside to use later. Within my build function, I add a marker already, which I can use at any time and add it to my Google map under the markers attribute. Now what's beautiful about this is by keeping it outside of my Google map, I can make changes of, on this set at any time also later. So I can make changes to the maps. I can remove markers. I can add markers. I can move the markers around or I can change the way these markers are visualized. Let's have a look at the structure of these markers. So to create a marker, I need a marker ID, which is really nothing else but a glorified string. And I can add additional information. Of course, it has a position where it should be displayed on the map. Whether it's visible or not, you might use that to add or flash in and out markers icon is how it's visualized. There is a default default marker, but you can also use your own icons or even little bitmaps uh, to place on the map. An info window where you can add some additional information. And very important, the functions on tap, on drag, drag start, drag end. That way you can make your marker sensitive. You can click on it and something happens or you can drag them on the map. So in my scenario, I just create one single marker 
as an ID, I use a string with a one. I use the location, the center position of my map and add that one on top of my map. And that's all what I need to do without any action on that marker. I just visualize it on top of the map. Now let's look at the edit function. Now on my edit screen, it starts out the same way. I open the map with one single marker at the center location. So that's identical code, but then it gets a bit different. I implement the on tap function. I create a new marker at the new position with the same ID and put that one here in the set state function onto my map, meaning into the set that I have registered with my Google map. And because the ID is identical to the first one, it will just overwrite the first marker. What I also do is I record that position somewhere else where I will use it to update my database in the background. The floating action button is also slightly different. It's not just to close the screen, but to set the information. So that can trigger the saving, whether you want to have a cancel or confirm afterwards or not is really how you deal with the location where you save it. But basically you store the location. And in this case, I use the floating action button to initiate the saving. So I can easily use the on tap function to update the position because I have only one icon. In a different scenario where I would have multiple markers on my map and I want to change the position, I would not know which one I want to position there. So I, there are also other scenarios where I can add additional markers to my set of markers. Or if I want to change the location, I can, instead of on tap, click on the icon and drag it over the screen. So if that's what I want, I would not use the on tap function, but the on drag, on drag start, on drag end, which also gives me the position here and let long. And I can use that, the on drag end, you use one, you drag one marker across the map. And when you're done dragging, you record that position. With these little things, you can make your map a lot more useful. Write me in the comments below how you use the markers or other functions of the map to make it more interesting to the user. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like content like this, please follow my channel.